uh, today's topic is very interesting. Uh, is the emerging business opportunities and financing options? Uh, Our attempt would be to introduce uh, my my uh, all the is the learned panelists first of all, and there are two bankers. One is a lawyer and one is a uh, the youngest CEO, the your CEO club member, I would say, uh, uh, and Muhammad. And uh, he's 1998. I was just seeing your date of birth. So, Nine, so no, yeah. 1995. 1995 okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. not that so, young yeah yes 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 welcome on board so he's an influencer as well so we're trying to touch upon uh, how the industries have changed uh, their uh, landscape because of this landscape uh, because business landscape how did it affect their industry and uh, most of the businesses around the world also you know they depend hugely on financing and how and what sort of financing opportunities are available be it bank be it in private equity be it anything how the startups are being looked upon in the uae they would like to ensure that each and every single money that they lend goes to the specific purpose that it's been lent for so uh, that entails a lot of uh, the, you know areas covering compliance, com covering the regulatory aspects, um, covering you know the risk aspects. That all needs to be in place both at the client sense and because now the lenders would be more actively and intensely involved with the clients to have a much more broader and wider and deeper understanding. I think these are the broad changes that will take the industry forward and in uh, reshaping the entire working dynamics. Today, the banks can always go and see the VAT returns. They can see the four VAT returns with the quarterly VAT returns being filed and see what sort of turnover you have in your place. The changes that we've seen, I mean, we've been lucky in our business because Dubai is one of the hub for citizenship and residency by investment for different reasons. There's more than 100 nationalities here living in the UAE um, and uh, entrepreneurs, people who made their money. And it was only up to recently, and we'll come to that in, question, the, in the next question, that uh, golden visa and citizenship has been established. People are happy to be here in the UAE. They don't want to leave, but they also want to have the mobility to be able to travel freely. So they're approaching us and they made their money uh, and they're fed up of always going and asking for visas to be able to travel. We're advising government to implement this program to attract FDIs into their countries. Basically what we've done, we had to negotiate the prices with the suppliers to make the cost price our buying down and we had to put our margin a little bit down to in 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 in, in and uh, to to keep the same price or it's a price minus but it's not a big change it's not a five percent change so we done that for a year we have to do that for a year to keep the same market share to keep our clients with us they're not gonna go uh, elsewhere, and um, Alhamdulillah, we could done it. Uh, second thing that I want to mention is my second business, which is the e-commerce. Yeah, and I will link it with the GCC market. The GCC market, the mentality of the e-commerce is not an online payment one. So today, if I'm gonna list a product in my website, if I'm gonna receive a 100 order online payment i'm gonna receive a 1000 order cash on delivery so the gcc mentality is a cash on delivery mentality yeah so we had to make a cash on delivery system uh do contracts with new logistics to be in the different markets because cash on delivery you need the stock in that country so today alhamdulillah we are in all the gcc countries oman kuwait uh, saudi arabia uae and now we're developing the, the business to the Philippines, Singapore, Malaysia, and uh, Japan. Main important uh, issue that we all are facing and all corporates are facing is the aggressively changing lifestyle, which is completely uh, rewriting, reshaping the way of uh, businesses, the new demands that's going to be created for the social media today everyone wants to promote his company everyone wants to promote his product his service and i had this challenge before on my products i was relying to the social media but in another way now it's been like three four days uh, three four years uh, the influencers social media influencers they got a big quota in the market and uh, the promotion through the influencers has more performance has more numbers than the Facebook ads, Instagram ads, 
and it's less uh, in cost wise it's 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 less costly the critical uh, change uh, the paradigm shift that i see uh, from a lender's perspective would be that there would be a very strong collaboration between lender and the client uh, it would they would like to act as a team so to understand the business model and ensure that whatever uh, money has been uh, uh, you know lended is been used uh, for the same purpose and based on that the economic benefit has been achieved and then is been repaid back to the bank on a timely manner so that being the premises there could be you know a couple of uh, the traditional uh, models would be you know the debt finance uh, you know uh, you know the working capital finance in addition to that uh, there would be uh, a little more play for uh, new concepts like crowdfunding like mass finance there would be a big play for private equity sort of a thing there would be alternative uh, you know uh, solutions and models uh, in the form of uh, you know um, uh, sales and sale and lease back model um, with some buyback options there could be some um, sweat equity uh, models coming in so there and you know because the world is changing and everything is coming on uh, to digital um, platform so it is healthy for lenders also in terms of having a wider and a cross section of the clients and at the same time the clients would also have a easy and a wider approach to choose um, the, from a much uh, uh, wider um, the selection of the lenders that they, that are available and they not necessarily have to be in a specific country or a specific region but because of the digital uh, digitalization uh, you know the uh, reach would be much more wider um, and then if if things are uh, in place uh, from say clients the clients are much more financially disciplined uh, and in recognition of uh, the standard international accounting norms things would perhaps fall much quicker in place than it used to be earlier i work a lot with investors um, i work with the private equities uh, uh, many of my projects, I've, I've done them in a partnership, yeah. Um, so basically, it was, it's a bit, for me, I don't, with all my respect to the banking and banking system, I'm, I don't like to go to this option and, um, and uh, I don't like to start the business with the debt. Uh, but with the, for my situation, I go with investors in a five, six years contracts, up to 10 years, sometimes short contracts. Um, and like that, uh, I've, I'm, I'm investing in many of, uh, of, of my projects till, till today. I will give you briefly a couple of figures about the Ukraine. It's the biggest agriculture in the Europe. We have 60 million hectares, actually the whole land. Uh, and only um, an agriculture cultural land in our country is 42 million hectares uh, so that's why Ukraine is a perfect place and I know that a couple the biggest found already invested and start the agriculture business uh, in Ukraine we have five um, fifth place uh, Ukraine uh, is gathering on uh, in the world as a uh, export production and the third place in the world as a grain uh, 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 country whose product uh, uh, producing the grain so um um, I would say the uh, poten uh, because of the changing of the climate, UAE should uh, uh, have this shift uh, and provide uh, some investment in the country and to have this opportunity to have this land. Uh, the perfect is about Ukraine that all land still in in the private property of the citizen, and in two years uh, Ukraine completely changed the law. It, it will possible to buy agricultural land for foreign uh, companies. So we have only only a first stage of development of agriculture market. We have huge players uh, in Ukraine as a Bunge, it's USA company, uh, all um, Kovka, it's a Chinese company, Cargill, uh, ADM. So 
so many players already here. I think uh, Ukraine can be the partner of UAE in feeding the country in uh, agriculture sphere. So, um, and also Ukraine will be presented in Dubai Expo as an agriculture company uh, country. A bank would like to see two uh, basic things that historically how the company has performed and what is the future prospects. From a client's perspective, uh, the client in the time uh, that we are in and the time to come, it is the prerequisite that the client level, there has to be a proper financial planning. A skill set that the company have and also uh, the attitude that the promoters have. If the, those two things are there, then the chances of company doing much better uh, is there. In case if any of these things are missing, then perhaps, you know, these are the gaps that the company or the client has to look into. Similarly, from the bank perspective, uh, they would be a little more stringent in terms of their due diligence process. They would be much more intense in their due diligence process. There would be so many, uh, you know, uh, the, the risk that you have highlighted, like succession risk, if the current promoters are there tomorrow, uh, there is a change in succession risk. Is the Does the same um, business understanding prevails down the line or not? Or, you know, just to make sure, because uh, the bank, when it comes, especially on a greenfield project or any uh, startups, they tend to, uh, a medium to long term view. I would like to thank uh, all the CEO Club members for uh, attending to it and also for CEO Club for giving us the opportunity to present this important topic and we look forward to working with you very very closely. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, you know, for all the panelists and Mr. James for your valuable time for this wonderful uh, panel discussion. Uh, we really learn a lot. I'm sure audience here also enjoy the discussions and uh, all the insights. Um, so here, I just want to share with you upcoming events uh, on August 18th. We will have virtual meeting at 4 p.m. Um, member will have two to three minutes to introduce themselves and the uh, opportunities. Um, uh, that is the upcoming event in August. And today's session is very interesting. To extend uh, the topic, I'd like to ask you to submit your uh, business opportunities and, um, and financing uh, solutions. Uh, in the club, many members have uh, business opportunities and they also have financing solutions. So we are able to help you to match making and also to facilitate the deals. And thank you for your time. We're looking forward to see you very soon and have a great day.